Welcome everyone. Can you believe it started week five of the business management capstone class? Hopefully your teams are all starting to gel by now. It seems like it at least from the assignments I have graded so far. So keep up the great work. As always though, if you do have any concerns, definitely reach out to me when it comes to any team members. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the uh, week five assignments. So I'm going to click on the weekly modules content area and access the week five folder. As always at the top, we have the learning objectives for the week. Next, we have the assignment summary. Of course, right now you're already reviewing the week five overview video. Next, you're going to want to make sure you read chapter three, review the PowerPoint presentations for chapter three, review the Learn Smart documentation, the student quick tips and best practices. If you still have any questions about Learn Smart, uh, so far I believe everyone's got the hang of it though. The assignments for the week, you're going to have the course participation, which is a discussion board on social media and business evaluation. The Chapter 3 Learn Smart, the Global Simulation Year 7 Report, and the Global Simulation Decisions for Year 7. Last but not least, we have the Chapter 3 Quiz. Okay, now I'm going to scroll down. As always, you're going to see the course content information for that module, which this one's Module 5. Next, we have the course participation, social media, and business evaluation assignment, which is basically just a discussion board. The topic is going to be social media and networking apps effect on a company's external environment. Your initial post will contain what social media are you utilizing? What methods of networking do you apply for business? How can these platforms have a positive and negative impact on a company? What are some other external forces that can influence a company's outcome? So that's all going to be within your initial post. Step two is where you're going to review the other posts that your peers have created. And step three, you want to want to make a comment on at least two other posts. Make sure the replies are engaging. Uh, so far, I think most students are making them engaging. They're not just putting great job or I agree. So keep it up. Uh, fantastic job. This is Capstone. So obviously I do expect a lot. So let me go ahead and scroll down here. Next, we have the Chapter 3 Learn Smart. Like I stated before, it sounds like everyone's got a good handle on that. Then the Chapter 3 Quiz. Next, we have the Global Simulation Year 7 Report. Now, I did have a, a, a few emails about the Year 6 Report. So the good thing is, once you kind of get the gist of how the report should be formatted, then you really just start focusing on uh, the information that actually is within the reports. Make sure you address all of the five different areas within the year seven report. And if you have any questions when it, when it comes to grading, make sure you review the rubric for the year seven report that's attached to the assignment. And as always, you know, continue to feel free to reach out. If you do have questions about the reports, I will always make comments within any of the assignments that I grade if I deduct any points. So make sure you're reviewing those comments especially when it comes to the yearly reports. Next, of course, we have the Global Simulation Year 7 Decisions, which you should be very familiar with by now, how to accomplish that. It seems like at least everyone is able to get into Globus. They're able to make decisions. Now it becomes, are they the right decisions? Uh, so make sure you are communicating with your team members. The more you communicate, the better the outcome will be, I'm sure. Okay, let's take a look at the results for year six in Globus. We start with the year six scoreboard. The first company I want to look for was G, since I picked on them so much during the practice years. And as you can see, G is obviously doing something right now because they're in the mix, they're at 87. They're not at the bottom anymore. So great job, G, uh, whatever you did, keep it up. Let's go back all the way up to the top. We have uh, Team I at 106. They have a nice comfortable lead right now. You have Company D at second place with 98, Company B at 96, Company E at 92, so on and so forth. So we have a nice competition going on right now. Like I said, uh, Company I, they have a little bit of a lead, but eight points is not that big of a deal. Especially if some of the other teams are um, using a strategy that kind of takes a few years to kick in and reap the benefits of it. So right now, I'm not really concerned about any company. I would have my eye on A, the aim and click, just because they are at 60, so they are 17 points away from 
the next team. So that, that worries me just a little bit, but it's just your six and you still have plenty of time to catch up. So if we scroll down and look at the game to date scoreboard, it's going to be the exact same because we've only done year six so far, except team A did receive a bonus point. So now they're at 61. So everyone so far, keep it up. So let's go ahead and look at the earnings per share return on equity and stock price. Here we go. Earnings per share. We see team I is leading the charge at 3.41. Great job. Keep it up. So everyone else is meeting expectations. So fantastic because that was not the case in the practice uh, rounds except A. But there's still hope. So we won't pick on them yet. Let's go ahead and jump down to return on equity. Team I again. So I guess there's no surprise why Team I is leading the charge with the scoreboard. At 45.9, great job. Everyone else met expectations. Fantastic. Again, that was not the case in the practice round. So obviously you have understand what strategy that you need to implement to be competitive. Except for Team A, but let's give them a few years. Moving down to stock price. I sound like a broken record. Again, it's Team I. They're at 111. They got a pretty good lead there. The next team would be Company B at 79.88. With that said, again, everyone has met expectations except Team A. Moving on to credit rating. This is the one I said most companies over time either get an A plus, A, A minus, or a B plus. And look, year six, everyone is within that range, B plus or higher. Again, great job. Was not the case in the practice rounds. Now we have image rating. As you can see, it's not Team I now that has the, the highest. It's Company E that does at 81. Everyone meets expectations. A little bit different now, except B and A. But like I said, I'm not too worried yet. I'm sure they will next year. Let's go ahead and jump into the comparative competitive efforts summary page. So let's see what everyone has going on right about now. As I'm glancing through... I see for the price, we have B at 500, which seems pretty bold because in the practice rounds, Team I, if I'm not mistaken, had very high prices and they weren't doing so well. So we'll have to keep an eye on Team B. The average price is 293. It looks like when it comes to the PQ rating, we have the highest one is I at 5.9. And they're selling it for 320. And B is selling for 500 with 5.5. Now they can offer different models and so on and so forth. So brand reputation is all the same. Number of models differs from one to three. So it looks like the average is probably about two. So if we jump down the warranty period, looks like Team D got a little bit aggressive with the 180 days. On average, it looks like it's about 87, so roughly 90. And then if I look at the market share, it looks like Team E at 14.7 has the highest but then team c is right behind them at 14.1 so then if we look at team b at the 500 price point they're only at 3.8 now i'm not trying to discourage them for having a high price i'm just saying you better be best in show if you're going to charge 500 dollars compared to everyone else let's go ahead and move down to the drone segment so it looks like the average price is 1300 it looks like we have one team as high as 2000 so that's company B. And then it looks like their PQ rating, the highest one is actually company A at 5.4, company B is only 4.3, company C is 5.0. So my eyes, you may want to rethink your strategy a little bit at least, company B, if other teams are beating you with the PQ rating. It looks like the number of models average is almost 2. Warranty period looks like 120. We're kind of split almost 90 and 120 and a couple 60s. And then if we look at the market share, we see that the, the largest one is actually company C here. And then company D is tied with them too, actually 13.3. So very close. And then if I look up top, I said, well, what's the price difference? So the market share are tied. But the price difference is company D is charging $1,400 and company C is charging $1,150. So instantly I'm going to assume that company D is going to make more money. They get the same amount of market share. 
All right, so that, that's a quick summary for this week. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns or if you're having any issues with your team. Right now, I'd say keep up the great work. It seems like everyone's in the mix. Have a great week.